What's up guys and welcome back to this week's episode or welcome to this week's episode of Headphones Neil Reviews. Can't be back to an episode that hasn't actually happened yet so I'm actually gonna jump right into the episode because there's a lot of reviews to get through so I had a chance to watch a bunch of different, um, a couple of different movies, some TV shows, got some video game updates for you as well um, and a transition from a video game that I started this week and into another one but all within the same realm of that video game. So to start it off, um, last week or during the week, I had the inkling to rewatch the 300 movies. I was, you know, doom scrolling on YouTube and some clips came up and I got to thinking that, you know what, I haven't seen the movie since I want to say almost the time that it came out in theaters. I don't remember much of it. I could have sworn that it was like a two and a half hour, three hour movie. And so I just watched, went, uh, watched through it, went and enjoyed it. You know, still a good movie, still holds up well, especially with that um, color tint effect. I don't know what the red version is called. I want to kind of call it a chromatic effect, but whatever they did with that coloring effect for the whole movie generally just worked. I liked the whole pacing of the fast slowness um, in the fight sequences the dream sequence, the voiceover, and all of that. So generally the movie still holds up very well. I couldn't really speak to the, the visual or the, you know, green screen um, CGI stuff, but to me it looked well. I liked it and I think they kind of covered that with the color effect that they presented it with just so it hides it well. So for me, the movie holds up now after all these years. Um, I didn't think, anything good or bad of the sequel so I may get around to watching that at some point. Um, I forget what it's called but um, I did generally I liked it. Um, it was kind of 300 on the C so I might re-watch it just to see how it holds up now but um, overall I just wanted to start off the episode with that just so in case you're wondering have never seen it want to go back and re-watch it. The movie holds up. Uh, it's a good Gerard Butler film. Um, one of the guys or one of the um, Spartans that's with him, I couldn't quite place where I knew him from, but he was very familiar. So um, you'll, when you see him, you'll know him. It's the guy doing the narration and with the eye patch. And then, of course, you have Lena Headey from Game of Thrones, among other things in there as well. So still a very good movie to watch. I still recommend it. Um, and it comes in at a runtime of about two hours. So not nearly as long as I thought to the point where I could have sworn that there's a whole other bit of a story that I missed, but it was all in there because everything that I could have sworn I remembered was there. So not sure why I thought it was a two and a half hour, three hour movie. Maybe it was the pacing of the time that I thought it was longer than I th than it is. So that's neither here nor there. Overall, still a good movie to watch. Um, otherwise, I also decided to uh, watch one last, you know, Halloween or horror related movie that I could find. So browsing around on AMC Plus, I saw that Priest was streaming. This stars uh, Paul Bettany, Maggie Q, Carl Urban, um, Joshua Plummer, or just, not Joshua, I don't know if Joshua Plummer, but you'll know the guy when you see him. But a lot of big name people to the point where, to me, it doesn't seem like one of those, that it seems like one of those movies that deserved a sequel or more backing or pro more prominence. Um, and maybe it did at the time, but basically you have a story around the war between uh, humans and vampires. Uh, the vampires have generally been eradicated and those that haven't are now living in camps. Um, and they're trying to come back to um, basically rebuild their empire. And it's up to the priests who are now, no, who are not allowed to practice their stuff, basically the uh, warfaring version arm of the priesthood, I guess, or whatever. So they're anxious to get back into it. Paul Bettany's character leaves the priesthood or leaves, you know, the confines of the city to go um, figure out the threat and take it on. So 
overall not too bad of a movie um it's kind of along the lines of maybe a mad max fury road but vampires versus humans kind of uh maybe a little bit more of the underworld aspect but less of the modern society and um blue tint to just no tint at all uh, less modern society and more of the apocalyptic side of things so to me not a terrible movie but um to me kind of felt, feels like it could have had a little bit more backing a little bit more of a story things like explaining the train um and or actually I, i'll probably say it's more of like a vampire meets uh judge dread so and you have that of course connection there with carl urban playing dread in the sequel movie to the um sylvester Stallone movie but in general if you think of it kind of like a judge dread with humans versus vampires then it also works a little bit but to me not a terrible movie but um it feels like it was missing a little bit of that punch to take it over the edge and maybe that's why it doesn't have as much prominence as it as it probably does but to me not a terrible movie overall it was um good enough of a film i made it through it was enjoyable and i made it through Um, I also had a chance to continue watching uh, Fear the Walking Dead, so Season 8, Episode 8, Iron Tiger. Um, overall, the episode was okay in that we had the return of Luciana and Charlie and the whole exchange there. Um, I thought in general it was an okay episode because we have Madison now learning that Charlie's the one who killed Nick. Um, And we have, you know, Luciana hesitant to bring Charlie out to begin with, the protector and all that. So for me, it was kind of an okay episode up until the point where um, all of the events happen. Charlie commits suicide. Um, and we have Dan Daniel finally outright telling Madison that she's the cause of all these problems. She's the troublemaker. She um, needs to leave because she's the one who's causing all these troubles. So while madison all the trouble can be related to madison her uh, re uh revenge for charlie killing nick and then her need to find alicia because she realizes that troy or we realize in this episode that troy has been the one who's been cutting off everyone's arms um is basically the trouble for all of this so um What's his name? Now I forgot his name already, but he blames Madison for all the troubles and she needs to leave and let everyone do what they do best and protect the ones they actually care about because Madison's incapable of doing it. So um, that part, I kind of feel like it kind of redeemed the episode. So it went from an okay episode to kind of good. So we'll see what they do for the rest of the season still. Um, I'm continuing to watch Loki. So watched season two, episodes four and five. So I'm caught up on it. Um, and in general, it's, um, like I said, all the acting is good, but the story is getting okay to the point where, uh, we actually need a little bit more progression on what they're doing with, um, the man, or, um, the man who, the, he, the, he who lives or he who exists or so whatever that guy's name was that they had to go back to the old West to find make progress on that story, the loom and all of that. So we still had a lot more of jumping back and forth through time, through time and all the characters trying to figure out how to solve stuff. So the latest episode, episode uh, five, feels like a fallout from episode four. So I guess they're building up to the season finale. So we'll see what happens, but um, so I'm kind of holding hope that they actually end the season good, but we'll see. Season Episode five was actually an okay episode. They didn't really accomplish too much, so we'll see what happens there um i'm continuing to make my way through stargate atlantis i made myself or i'm now into season four we had the death of um dr weir at the end of season three because they had to go to the um the replicator city to get a zpm um so we, now we have colonel carter taking over the expedition so i like that part so now i have the context of why she's uh, or the part where she took over atlantis But the whole thing with the ZPM and the Replicator City and all that just feels like a like a miniaturized version of everything that happened in Stargate SG-1. So we'll see how they deal with everything in, throughout the rest of the season four and five. But um, it's kind of now into uncharted territory. Some parts seem familiar and some don't. So I know that I'm at that point where I haven't seen everything. So just refreshing my memory on all of that. Um, I also had a chance to 
finish Doom 2 the Plutonia experiment and overall I want to say that I can see why people consider the game one of the hardest well, I don't know if it was one of the hardest mods out there but why they consider this mod to be to be particularly difficult so um and to that point where I want to say in the last few episodes or last few levels of the game I did end up turning god mode on just because of timing with things I was you know getting kind of tired so I didn't really have time to go through the levels over and over to find everything deal with all the enemies and all that but I did get, um, play through the levels as if God mode was off. So, you know, still defeat the enemies, get ammunition, find the keys. If I come across a secret area, then all of that stuff. So just play the rest of the game. And overall, I enjoyed it. So we have, we still have an icon of sin, but in this case, it's the gatekeeper who's keeping the gate open to have all the minions of hell come through the portal and try and take over earth and all of that. And all because of the uh, because the UAC op created their particle accelerator thingy and continued to mess with portal technology. Um, so overall, I do recommend the game, but I can see why they recommend that the mod is more for advanced or experienced Doom uh, players. If you're an amateur or beginner game player, for like I am, then. At some point you're gonna have trouble playing the game and defeating the levels or it's gonna take that much longer to get through each level where you know maybe the usual levels took 20 to 30 minutes the you know at some point the levels are gonna start taking you 30 to 60 minutes or longer just because you have to you know find your path to the enemies worry uh, figure out how you're gonna defeat them and find the keys and make sure you have enough health and all of that stuff so for me I would say that Doom 2 the Plutonia experiment is more for you're better than average gamer so just and this is excluding the secret levels so the secret levels were hard enough as it is but if you get through them early on then at least you have that preparation for how the rest of the game is going to be um but the ending of the game is going to be difficult the last level is probably the exclusion to it um just because it is a little bit harder than usual but if you did get through the ending of doom 2 um with the icon of sin and all of that then you kind of know what you're getting yourself into so it's not it's going to be difficult but it's not unmanageable if you've played that but the rest of the levels do have you know cyber demons and barons of hell and arch files and revenants and just about every single enemy in doom in those levels in various combinations so um that's kind of the warning i'm going to give that the first half of the game is not too bad you can make your way through it if you play doom one and two but the second half will progressively get harder and harder and harder so um just a warning there um so what i did after that now that that game is done as i got started looking at different mods and i saw that there was a sequel to that called doom 2 plutonia 2 where the uac was disbanded and they created the uaac or uacf or something like that where um doom guy and the various marines created a new agency to deal with a new kind of um collider to open portals one with more oversight and things like that but due to well, based on the story you know it came under suspicion and um the science and various other scientists and doctors realized that stim packs and med packs and things like that were causing residual side effects um by prolonged use of that so the doom guy or a, a portal opens and the doom guy realizes that there's too much bureaucracy so he's gonna go figure out how to close the portal so i decided to start playing the mod just to see how uh this works as a sequel so in general the initial levels are well designed i got through the first like four or five uh, basically through the flooded cathedral and they're well designed levels the second level i want to say is randomly difficult but the other four are okay so um i'm gonna recommend playing it but the reason i'm giving that recommendation now is that the android port of gz doom that i've been using to play doom on my android device recently got an update so it updates you know gz doom to the latest version or one of the later versions so 4.1.3 or 4.11.3 or something like that but i wasn't paying too much attention to that i did see that they made an update to the doom 3 engine that's part of the part of delta touch and i got to thinking well you know what i never got around to a playing doom 3 and b finishing it but also c trying to see if i could get doom 3 playing running on my android device um there was a port made of doom 3 but it was only for the nvidia shield i think like or something like that so short of you know rooting and roaming my phone and pretending my device is an nvidia shield 
I got to thinking, well, you know what? I have Dune 3 in my Steam library, so let me see if I can get that copied over to my Android device, much like I've been doing with Doom 1 and 2. I have both of those in my Steam library, so you can copy over the WADs, copy over any mod files, and just play using Delta Touch, and you can use GZ Doom, LZ Doom, Chalk Doom. There's a few different um, ports, uh, port, or source ports available you can use to play Doom on your Android device. If you want to go beyond what the official release ports in on the Google Play Store that are available are. So, um, needless to say, I found the instructions. It's actually super easy. Um, in GZ or in Delta Touch for um, Doom 3, it gives you the instructions of copying the PK4 file from the Doom 3 installation on your PC, putting it in the Doom 3 folder, I think it's our Doom 3 slash base folder or something, and you can now play Doom 3 on your Android device. Um, the caveat is, is that if you own the Doom 3 BFG edition, that version is not available to play. There's no PK4 files, and I guess it's generally not as mod friendly on anything but your desktop and, and reading online is generally not very mod friendly. So if you do want to play Doom 3 on your device, on your Android device, you do have to play with the original version of Doom 3. So I'm going to pause my gameplay of Plutonia 2 and start playing Doom 3 for a week. Um, I think if memory serves, I at some point did own the CDs, the installation CDs for Doom 3 and I got through maybe the initial part. So the intro and um, I think in the initial parts of the base and stuff but the game was basically or my computer was just at the low end limits of playing Doom 3 so it was very stuttery. I had to turn off all the visual elements and then I had to do some Windows trickery to turn off um, like a lot of the animations and resources and it was a big hassle to play so I never really got very far into it. But now that I played Doom 1 and 2 um, Doom 64 um, and then various mods, I think I should be in better shape to play Doom 3. So I'm going to give that a shot to see how far I can get, see how it goes, see if I can play the game beyond just loading the game and um, doing the initial, like getting up to that initial check-in desk. So I've done that part already. So um, I'm going to give it a shot and see if I can get through playing Doom 3 and knock that off of my list of games to play. I know it was generally not well received just because it was more on the horror side versus the Doom story side and things like that. So I'm also going to do the usual research of what the story is and gameplay elements and just things I should know. I do know that in general the original game was very dark so um, I'll probably have to get used to the, you know, things like the flashlight or toggling between the flashlight and gun. Um, I am, oh, and also before I forget, I am playing the, with the enhanced mod. So it does um, upscale some of the um, game assets. So the visuals should be a little bit visually better and modern compared to the original game. So there is that. If I see, if see a flashlight mod or it continues to be an issue, then I'll see if I can find that mod because I do remember from years ago someone made a mod where you can keep the flashlight on with your gun um but we'll see how all that goes that's all it's still all in the early stages I just figured all that out I was able to copy over the game files and at least make sure it was running so that is the plan for now but that is all for this particular episode and review so if you have any questions comments feedback or anything like that you can comment on this post on whatever social media sites I'm on. All the links are up on the website at headphonesneal.reviews. Um, gameplay videos and video versions of, of the podcast are up on the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash pateln01. And then, of course, you get an ad-free version of the episode, early access to it, and all of that good stuff by visiting the Patreon or visiting and sub supporting the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash pateln01. But that is all for this particular episode. Thanks for tuning in and until the next time.